What is up everyone? Mark here and welcome to the Prepared Pantry episode 3. Today we're going to make chicken parm. Now chicken parm is an easy dish to make but it's also an easy dish to screw up. Uh, we are not going to do the casserole thing that makes the chicken soggy. Um, if we're going to go to the trouble of frying our chicken, I want it to stay crispy. So we're going to be doing this restaurant style. Uh, how does that differ from doing it in a casserole? Uh, you'll see in a minute when we get started. Um, I promise it's still an easy recipe. It's still very doable um, and mostly includes uh, stuff that you'll have on hand anyway. Uh, before we get started, I want to thank you all again for continuing to support the channel and continuing to watch my videos. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please do. You can click the red button down below and just make sure you hit that bell icon so you get a notification every time I have a new video out. All right, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, I just want to remind you that the full recipe for this is going to be down in the description below the video. Uh, we're going to kind of take this a piece at a time as we move through because we are also going to be making the sauce from scratch. So the first thing we need to do is butterfly and pound out our chicken breasts. So I've already um, trimmed these a little bit of excess fat and uh, dried them, blotted them with a paper towel. We are going to carefully cut them uh, crosswise, fold them over, and then pound them flat. We want these to both come out to be around an eighth of an inch once they're pounded out. So just be careful when you do this. You don't want to cut yourself. And you want to make sure you don't quite cut all the way through. And I'm just going to cut both of these first and then we'll do the pounding. Fold our plastic wrap over. So now we've got this between two sheets of plastic. I'm gonna put a little bit of water on the surface of the plastic here just to help the tenderizing mallet kind of glide over the surface a little more easily. And we are just gonna use the flat side of the mallet to pound this out. Now again, I'm looking for about an eighth of an inch in total. So uh, we'll just uh, start flattening. Be careful not to overdo it. You don't want to smash your chicken breasts into complete oblivion. <laughs> I'm going to just lay this on a wire rack and repeat with the second breast. Okay, we're going to salt these on both sides. And we're just going to cover this loosely with plastic wrap. All right, so this is gonna go into the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. Um, I'm gonna do that and we're gonna come back and start making our sauce. Okay, it's time to get started on our sauce. So we have a quarter of a cup of olive oil is gonna go into the pan. And we just wanna heat that through. And once it's shimmering, we're gonna add our garlic. That was eight cloves of garlic minced, by the way. Okay, it's just starting to brown. We're gonna add four anchovy fillets. You won't taste the fish, I promise. 
Uh, this really just adds some umami. And I'll just kind of smash them up with the back of the spatula. Red pepper flake. It's a half a teaspoon of red pepper. Uh, Parmesan cheese, that's two tablespoons. And two 28 ounce cans of tomatoes. Once this is bubbling hot, we are going to reduce the heat and let it simmer for about a half hour to an hour. Um, during that time, it should reduce to uh, about half of this. I'm just gonna, again, smash the tomatoes with the uh, back of the spatula. So at this point, it is thickening up nicely almost there. We want this to be almost dry. We want it to be a bit thicker than this. And this is still going to be more sauce than we need for the chicken parm. So um, obviously the, the normal side that you would have with chicken parm is pasta. So what you could do is uh, use some of this sauce, loosen it up a little bit with some broth or wine, and it's perfect for your pasta side. Uh, now we're going to try and do something a little bit healthier here. And the side that I'm going to make to go along with this tonight is just some garlic broccoli. Uh, and we'll make that um, once the chicken is prepared and just before we're ready to sauce it and melt the cheese and finish everything up. But I'm gonna let this go for a few more minutes and um, we'll come back and check on it when it's done. All right, as you can see, the sauce has now thickened significantly. And this is exactly what we want. Not only does that help concentrate the flavor, but it's also gonna help prevent our chicken parm from getting soggy. Now, you can, uh, you can drain the tomatoes before you put them in if you like. I left them uh, undrained uh, only because I wanted to reduce that extra uh, liquid from the cans down, you know, adds more flavor. Uh, this took about an hour to reduce this sauce, but it probably would have gone quite a bit quicker if I had just drained them. Uh, but again, you know, I sacrificed some time uh, for flavor. All right, I'm going to take this off the heat and set it aside, and we're going to get ready to make our breading. All right, let's make our breading. So for this, we're going to need 120 grams of plain breadcrumbs. Uh, that's about a cup. We're gonna need 20 grams of salt and vinegar potato chips. That's about 13 or 14 chips, depending on the size. We're going to need two teaspoons of dried parsley, two teaspoons of dried oregano, and a teaspoon and a half of garlic powder. Okay, we're gonna just close up the bag, as much of the air as we can, and we're just going to break up the chips by hand and just get this mixed. And the chips don't need to be very small. Of course, chunks is fine. Let's get our breading station set up. All right, I've got our chicken out of the fridge. Uh, I've already gone and uh, patted it dry again with paper towel. And because we salted this before it went in, chances are that was gonna draw out some moisture, so you probably will have to towel it off a little bit. So next, we are going to add our breading mixture to one of three pie plates that we're going to use for our breading stations. So that's our breading mix. Then we've got 70 grams of flour in another tray. And we're going to beat two eggs for the last one. OK, 
Okay, so we're gonna take our breasts one at a time and dredge it in the flour first. And we just wanna make sure that it is fully coated, including the edges. And shaking off the excess, it's going to go into the egg. And then from the egg into our breading mix. If possible, try to keep one hand more dry, one hand more wet. That way you end up with less issues of breading sticking all over you. Now, if you wanted to do this in more of a family style casserole, it is still possible to do that with this recipe. Uh, what you would do instead is, uh, instead of leaving these breasts whole, you would cut them into about six or seven pieces each, uh, just smaller, you know, uniform as you can get them, and bread them that way. and. Um, and then they can be tiled into a casserole dish in a similar way to how we are going to uh, prepare these with our sauce and cheese at the end. All right, now we're gonna get this cleaned up and get ready to cook our chicken. Okay, let's cook up some chicken. So we're gonna get our burner going. And we're gonna heat up about a tablespoon of olive oil. And a couple tablespoons of butter. And when the butter starts foaming up, that's about when we're gonna drop in our chicken. And of course we're doing restaurant style portions, so we're only gonna be able to cook one of these at a time. All right, so we're gonna let this go on the first side covered for about two or three minutes and check on it. And the flip. Now we're gonna wipe out the pan and repeat with the second breast. Okay, rinse, repeat. Tablespoon of olive oil. Couple of tablespoons of butter. And now this is actually one instance where I am not bothering to temp the chicken to know that it's done. It's so thin. Uh, that just getting that color on both sides is a pretty good indication that it's good. Time to flip. All right, now I'm gonna throw these in a warm oven uh, just to keep them at temperature for a few minutes, just long enough for us to throw together some garlic broccoli. Okay, so with the chicken uh, 
staying warm in the oven. We're going to add just a little bit of olive oil to the pan. And a couple of cloves of chopped garlic. And I just want this to sizzle and get a little bit of color before we go ahead and add the broccoli. That is looking good. So in goes just one large crown of broccoli uh, cut into relatively small florets. Alright, so with this on medium, I'm going to cover it and let it steam a little bit just so that it cooks a little bit more thoroughly. Uh, in a couple of minutes, we'll take the cover off and start mixing it. Just make sure that it's not burning, uh, that we get some good color on there, and that it's cooked all the way through. And we'll set this aside, and we'll continue with our chicken. Bright green and beautiful. Okay, and I'm going to leave the cover off because, again, I want to develop some a little bit of browning here. Now I don't want to take this too far, it kind of depends on how you like your broccoli. Uh, I like a little bit of brown there, but not too much. And I'll press it into the pan a little bit with the back of the spatula, kind of help, helps with the browning. Alright, that looks good to me. I'm going to kill the heat. And because I like a little extra garlic, I'm going to go with a little garlic powder and then stir that in. And I'm just going to cover this and set it aside while we get back to the chicken. Okay, we are in the home stretch now, I promise you. So. First thing we need to do is take some of our sauce and lay it out in a very thin layer on a sheet pan. And I just kind of want to put down enough for an area that'll be covered by the chicken. That's, there's no need to waste any sauce on anywhere that's not exposed. Um, this chicken is just going to sit on a bed of sauce here. Okay, now we're not quite ready for the chicken just yet. Uh, this is going to go under the broiler on high for a couple of minutes. We're going to watch it really closely. Uh, we just want it to darken a little bit and develop a little bit more of a deep flavor. All right, so as you can see, this darkened just a little bit. So we're going to put down our chicken. I'm going to spoon on a little bit more sauce. Now the key here is to have a, a somewhat light touch with the sauce. We don't want to overdo it. It's a thick, drier sauce to begin with, so that should help us. And I have here uh, two ounces each of shredded mozzarella and shredded fontina. Now again, if you wanted to do this as a casserole, you absolutely could. Uh, just instead of saucing and broiling uh, on the pan, you would do it in a casserole dish. And as I said, you'd cut uh, and fry smaller pieces of chicken so that you could tile them together. Sort of creating the same thing that we're doing here, except you'd be doing it on the inside of a casserole with smaller pieces of chicken. All right, so we're going to park this back under the broiler for a couple of minutes, and then we will finally be ready to eat. Okay, it is time to eat. Let's plate this up. Of course, I don't want to waste any of that extra sauce. First, I'll try the broccoli. Mm. 
good garlic flavor on that. Oh, that's good. And the sauce is a little sweet. Very flavorful. It packs a punch. Now, again, if you were making pasta as a side, there's plenty of leftover sauce from this recipe. You would just want to thin it out a little bit with some water or broth or wine and mix that in with your pasta. And... That would be fabulous with this too. Again, I was just trying to be a little bit more healthy and go with the broccoli this time. Eat your vegetables. Guys, that's gonna do it for another one. We'll see you next time.